Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, uh, I am discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 93. This is with Asalyana, Asalyana uh, also known as Asalyana Sutta. Right? So the context of this discourse is that Buddha was staying in Savatthi in Jetta's Grove and at that time there was there were some 500 Brahmins who were residing in Savatthi and amongst them was one Brahmin student, Asalyana, who was young but he was very uh, learned, who had mastered the Vedas and all. So the Brahmins thought that uh, Asalyana can have a dialogue with the Buddha, other than Asalyana can have, a, can have a kind of a debate with the Buddha. So they approached Asalyana and said that the ascetic Gautama advocates purification of all four classes. Right Now see, the prevalent thing was that in the Vedas it was said that uh, only the Brahmins are the highest caste, they are the pure caste, absolutely pure, then they they only can perform the rituals to take a person to heaven or you know all the you know kind of rituals they only because they are pure now buddha says that all people of all castes need to be purified right there is basically buddha says there is no kind of someone is born in a higher caste or something there is no such thing right and this is what buddha was challenging directly the position of the vedas which was based on this varna system and the caste system right and because of this to this day you know, uh, Buddha has been kind of maligned and orchestrized and his knowledge has been, you know, especially in India, right? So, so they, so these Brahmins, because this is a direct challenge to their power, their authority, their status. So, they said that let, let Asalyana challenge Buddha. And uh, uh, so, Asalyana said, no, no, I cannot do that because he knew the power of the Buddha, the, the, the depth of Buddha's knowledge and everything. So, they still pressed, pressed, pressed grilled him and finally Asalyana relented and he said okay I'll go and meet and uh, he says Asalyana said Master Gautama the Brahmins say and he was so afraid when he said that he did not even say that no I have this view he is like he knew this uh, it is like the sense that is coming out is new he knew very well that this contention this argument will not hold ground right still because he was pressed too much by the Brahmins he went ahead he said only the Brahmins say I am not saying the Brahmins say only Brahmins are the best caste, other castes are inferior. Only the Brahmins are the light caste, other castes are dark. Only Brahmins are purified, not others. And so when he said that, he said to Buddha, what do you think about it? Uh, 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 he, so Buddha gave now a lot of, you know, I think eight or ten logics to help Asalyana only see the, the fallacy of his view. So Buddha first, Buddha says, but Asalyana, Brahmin women are seen menstruating, being pregnant, giving birth and breastfeeding. Yet even though they are born from a Brahmin womb, they say only the Brahmins are the best caste, all other castes are inferior, only Brahmins are the light caste, other castes, only Brahmins are purified, uh, not others. Even though you say this, still the Brahmas, Brahmins maintain, so that's the first logic he's saying, uh, Buddha says, and he, Asalyana said, no, Still you say this, the Brahmins maintain that particular belief. Right? Second, he, uh, Buddha says that, Have you heard that in Greece and Persia and other foreign lands, there are only two classes, masters and bonded servants, and that the masters may become servants and the servants may become masters. So it is not that, you know, like you have Brahmins as the purified class, the highest caste. He, he was, Buddha was giving example in Greece and Persia, masters can also become servants, servants can also become masters. So he said, yes, uh, Asalyana said, yes, sir, that is true. So he said, what is then the source of Brahmins' self-confidence and forcefulness in the matter that they make this claim? Asalyana had no response. Then uh, Buddha says, suppose an aristocrat were to kill living creatures, steal, commit sexual misconduct, use a speech that is false, divisive, harsh. harsh. When their body breaks up, they, are re they would be reborn in a place of loss. Now, Buddha says, would this happen only to the aristocrat? or to a Brahmin or a peasant or a manual also. So uh, Asalyana said, sir, it will happen to anyone who commits wrong deeds. They will go into a wrong, wrong uh, hell realms and everything because of their conduct. Then again, Buddha said, then why are you saying like this, uh, that uh, Brahmins are the superior caste? Then he said, suppose, then Buddha said the inverted thing. Suppose a Brahmin were to refrain from killing living creatures, stealing, committing sexual misconduct. Right? He refrains from all the negative things. So they will be reborn in a good place. Now, will it happen only for a Brahmin, but also will it, will it happen also for an aristocrat, peasant or menial? 
So Salina said, yes, sir. If, if it, this the same fate will happen to an aristocrat, peasant or menial also. Okay. Then Buddha says, uh, only a, is only a Brahmin capable of developing a heart of love, freedom, free of enmity and ill will for ill will for the this region and not an aristocrat? He said, no. Uh, any anyone can develop a heart of ill will, free of enmity and uh, uh, ill will. Right? Then Buddha said, is only a Brahmin capable of taking some bathing paste of powdered shell, going into the river and washing off the dust and dirt? Not an aristocrat, peasant or menial. He's, so Asaliana said, no sir, all the four classes are capable of doing that. Then uh, Buddha says, suppose an aristocrat king was uh, to gather a hundred people born into different castes and say to them, uh, please let anyone who is born in a family of aristocrats, brahmins or chieftains take a drill stick of made of teak and burn a fire. So basically Buddha was saying that a fire that is lit by an aristocrat or a brahmin or a, a, any other caste, the fire will be lit because of the process that was done. So he said yes, uh, anyone who can lit the fire. right? Then Buddha says that suppose an aristocrat boy was to sleep with a Brahmin girl and they had a child. What would the child be called? To will be he will we be called an aristocrat or a Brahmin? So he said uh, they can be called either. So then Buddha says Brahmin boy sleeps with an aristocrat girl and they had a child. What that would that child be called an aristocrat after the mother or a Brahmin after the father? Asalina said they could be called either. Then Buddha gives an example of a mule. Suppose a mare were to mate a donkey and she gives birth to a mule. Would the mule be called a horse after the mother or a donkey after her father? So he, so he said it's a mule, it's a crossbred. I see the difference in these cases. That means it's a crossbred. Right? Then Buddha says, suppose there were two Brahmin students who had who were brothers, like twin brothers. Right? Now Buddha gives the example of two Brahmins, two Brahmin uh, boys who were twin twins who shared the same womb at the same time. Now, uh, one was ed educated, other was not educated. So he said, if you have to feed uh, uh, and give an offering for the ancestors, who will you feed first? So he said, educated one I will feed. So then Buddha says, suppose there were two Brahmin students, one was educated but was of unethical character, other was not an educated but was ethical character. Who will you feed first? So he said, I will feed the one who was uh, not educated but was a, of an ethical character. So now Buddha says that first you relied on birth, that the Brahmin caste is superior. Now then you switch to education. You said that I will I will feed an educated and not an educated. And then when it comes to character or, and his deeds, then you said that I will uh, feed a person who is of a, a Brahmin who is an ethical, ethical character. Uh, right now you have come around to believe in purif. Now you have come around to believing in purification for the four castes, just as I advocate. And when Buddha said this, uh, Asalyana sat silent, dismayed, shoulders drooping, downcast, depressed, with nothing, to, nothing to say. So, so this is like where Buddha himself showed to Asalyana that what you know false, you know wrong thing his argument is. So then Buddha shared this one more, more thing is coming that Buddha shared this story about that uh, at one time the seven Brahmin seers, which is basically the Saptarishis, right, who were uh, there in their huts in in um, in the wilderness and they had this harmful conception that Brahmins are the best and other castes are inferior. At that time, a seer Devula the Dark, he was also there, and uh, and uh, when the Brahmins saw them, he says he they started to curse him. So they said, be ashes, low life, be ashes, low life. But the more this, this Brahmin seers curse him, the more attractive, good looking and lovely the Devala became. So Brahmin said, our, all our fervor is in vain. Our spiritual path is fruitless because when he even cursed someone, then they become more attractive. So the Devala dark was very learned sage. Uh, he said, no, your fervor is not in vain. Your spiritual path is not fruitless. Please let go of your benevolence towards me. Your bad Please let go of your bad thoughts about me. So, this, then then they will ask them ask them the question, and these are very pointed questions to the to these Brahmins, these Saptarishis. That do you know whether your birth mother had only relations with a Brahmin and not with a non-Brahmin? Right? These are all provocative, direct questions. So, he, they said no, we don't know. 
he, he then devla asked do you know whether your birth mother's mother back to the seventh generations only had relations with brahmins and not with non brahmins so they said no we don't know but do you know whether your birth father only had the relation with a brahmin woman and not with a non brahmin they said we don't know then they, he asked that whether your birth father father back to the seventh generation had relations with brahmins or not or not with non brahmins we don't know we cannot say so he says the how an i he says do you know how an embryo is conceived so the subtrishi said yes sir we know embryo is conceived when the three things come together mother and father a uh, mother is in the fertile phase of a menstrual cycle and the virile spirit is put in but the devla asked do you know for sure whether the virile spirit this the the uh, the semen of the father the sperm is an aristocrat brahmin peasant or menial so they said we don't know that so devla said in that case you don't know who you are so they said yes we do not know who we are so basically so even those seven brahmin seers they were like the highest seers brahmin seers they were stumped when pursued pressed and grilled grilled by the seer devla on their own genealogy so buddha said how can you succeed being so when those even seven seers were not spared and when they were questioned they were grilled they were stumped who are you right buddha said how you could how could you succeed being grilled by me now on your own genealogy when you have not even mastered your own tradition and when asala heard this he said excellent master gautama from this day forth may master gautama remember me as a lay follower who has gone for refuge to life so he became a lay follower so this is a fairly straightforward kind of a uh, 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 discourse where buddha totally refuted this, this thing that brahmins are the highest class and one more thing i have actually in my research i came across is that within the brahmanic circles this this passage in the vedas that was there that brahmins have come from the mouth and you know all this division even the brahmanical circles there was lot of opposition against it that this is wrong thing that is there right so we anyways at this point where we are we have let go of these things right we have moved ahead and friends we have to move ahead treat all castes as equal buddha said it's by your behavior that determines your your whether you are brahmin not by the caste so i hope this was useful do share your insights thoughts in the comment section and uh, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description you can read that um, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddha